The other day, I stumbled upon a report on average incomes across Canada. In this video, we will talk about how much Canadians make, who are the rich and not so rich Canadians, where they live, and how you can make a higher income too. Let's go. So let's take a look at some fascinating numbers. In 2020, Canada's median after-tax household income per year was $73,000. This is after-tax, the cash you receive on hand as a household. Now, it's important to note that when Stats Canada reports on a household, it doesn't specifically differentiate whether there is one single person living in the household or a family with children. But generally, it is safe to assume that we're looking at an average family of three. Back to the numbers. With that number, we can calculate that the pre-tax income per household is somewhere around $105,000. And this is not the average income, it's the median. And the median is the value in the middle of the data set, meaning that 50% of Canadian population have a value smaller than the median amount, and the other 50 population have a value higher than the median. The good news is that this number is about 10% higher than just five years ago. The bad news is that inflation is about 20% since 2015, which means that in the reality, the median income of Canadians has decreased by around 10%. But wait, there are some good news. The low income population count has gone down by 3%. This is the biggest five-year change since 1976. The report shows that the majority of people who make the most amount of money are between 25 and 44 years old. These are our prime years. However, the highest earners in Canada are actually people aged 45 to 54 years old, with the top 10% within that age range making more $100,000 after tax. Unsurprisingly, men in Canada make more money. If we look at 25 to 54 year age group, the highest earning men on average make 17,500 more after tax than the highest earning women. That's almost $1,500 less per month that a woman brings home. 1,500. You can do an all-inclusive in the Caribbean every month a year for that money. If you are a woman and are furious about this number, smash the like button below and share this video with another friend so that they know that next time they're interviewing for a job and negotiating their offer, they should add an extra 17,500 to their first intuitive salary ask. Now let's look at the average income across Canada. Unlike the median income that's measured for an after-tax household income, average income is typically measured in personal before tax numbers. According to the StatsCan report, the average income of a Canadian person was approximately $51,300 before tax per year. We also found data from Labour Force Survey for the year 2022 that shows that the average salary of a Canadian person was $59,300. That's a 16% increase over two years. As we mentioned before, it is not enough to look at the salary increase in isolation, and we must take inflation into account. For instance, another private company reports that the national average salary is expected to go up by 4.2% this year, while the inflation in a single month of February this year is 5.2. What this tells us is that despite the seemingly impressive income growth in Canada, the real income of Canadians adjusted for inflation is actually decreasing. It is worth keeping in mind that salaries in Canada vary widely depending on so many factors, and one of them is the province in which you live in. So how much does the average income differ between provinces? The Northwest Territories boast the highest average salary per person in Canada at approximately $94,000 followed by Alberta at approximately $73,000. Both provinces rely heavily on the resources and energy industries, which are some of the biggest drivers of the Canadian economy. If anyone from the Northern Territories and Alberta are watching us, leave us a comment below and let us know what it's like living in those provinces. The lowest average salary is found in Prince Edward Island at approximately $45,000. The province relies heavily on the agriculture and farming. I've known someone who lived in PEI and worked in berry processing. They've had nothing but the amazing things to say about the PEI nature and its people. Let us know if you've been there or you are actually come from there. We'd love to learn more about this place.
one of the things that significantly affect average personal income is minimum wage. Each province and territory has its own minimum wage rate. The highest minimum wage is in Yukon and it's currently $16.77 per hour. The lowest minimum wage is in Saskatchewan at $13 per hour. These wages change on a regular basis and you can always check the latest information on the appropriate government website. <laughs> Now that we know average and median incomes, how does that compare to other developed countries? Let's see. According to the OECD, the average income in Canada in 2021 was approximately 56,000 American dollars. You've probably noticed the difference between OECD numbers and the labor force survey that we've shared with you. That's because the income numbers here are calculated a little bit differently. But still, this chart is convenient for comparison purposes. We can see that Canadian income is the 12th highest among the developed countries countries. It is lower than Australia, Belgium, Norway and some other wealthiest European countries. On the other hand, we're doing better than the UK, Sweden, France, Italy, Japan, Spain, Portugal and a bunch of other countries. Now you're thinking, but it's all about the cost of living, isn't it? And you're absolutely right. To get a sense of the cost of living, I really love using the Nambio.com website. You can choose any two cities and compare different categories that impact the cost of living. It's really helpful in understanding what to expect when choosing the city that you want to move to. For example, according to the OECD statistics, Canada's and Germany's average salaries are on par. So let's compare our cost of living in the two biggest cities in those two countries, Toronto and Berlin. The consumer prices in Toronto are almost 2% higher than in Berlin. That's not bad, but it does get worse for Toronto. Rent prices in Toronto are almost 30% higher than in Berlin. Groceries in Toronto are more expensive too, by almost 17%. Another thing that impacts a disposable income is taxes. If we look at tax on personal income, Canada's taxation is also higher than Germany's by about 2%. All that to say is that no matter how high the income numbers seem for any country at all, what matters in the end of the day is how much it costs to live in the country or in the city and how much money you have left over after paying tax, paying for rent and food and all the necessities. And so far, things aren't looking good for Canada. So how can you optimize your income and cost of living for the best? We made a video about saving tips in Canada, so make sure to check it out so that you can budget better and spend less in Canada and save more. <laughs> Now let's look at industries that offer high paying jobs and how you can optimize for saving more. Technology space. The technology sector in Canada is booming and jobs in this field can be some of the highest paying. Roles such as software engineer, data scientist, product manager and artificial intelligence specialists are in high demand and offer competitive salaries. The best part about these roles is that many of them are fully remote, which allows you to move to a cheaper city and lower your cost of living. This is by far far the best industry to get the most out of your income and reduce your cost of living. I personally will never stop advocating for technology industry. I work in this space and I absolutely love it. We are creating the future. Next is finance. Jobs in the finance industry, such as investment bankers, financial analysts, and fund managers, are some of the highest paying jobs in Canada. The upside for some of these roles can be infinite, thanks to the commission and bonus structure that they offer. However, the finance industry is generally conservative and that means that they offer less remote job options. While you can make a lot of money, you will likely also have to live in the most expensive city for this. Next, natural resources. Canada is rich in natural resources and job in industries such as mining, oil and gas and forestry can be very lucrative. Almost every province in Canada has some shape or form of resource production. And depending on the role, you might end up in a small city with lower costs of living and a decent salary. Small cities also don't have a lot happening in them, so you'll also save money on meals and entertainment. This one is for folks who don't get bored easily, of course. Next is healthcare. Jobs in a healthcare industry such as doctors, dentists, pharmacists, also all offer high salaries. We made a very detailed video about healthcare and how much different healthcare workers make. I highly recommend you watch it if you're thinking of making big money by going into the medical field. Healthcare workers are in demand pretty much everywhere across Canada, in cities big and small, so you have a freedom to choose where you want to live. Next is law. 
lawyers, judges, and other legal professionals also make up some of the highest paying jobs in Canada. Many of them end up opening private practices and working for themselves, which gives them flexibility to choose where they want to live and allows them to reduce their living expenses through tax deductions thanks to their private practice. Next is engineering. Engineers, particularly those in the fields of civil engineering, mechanical engineering, and electrical engineering, can also command high salaries in Canada. Engineers will always be in high demand. It's a highly rewarding and a very important profession, even though it doesn't offer as much mobility and flexibility as some others in our list. It is important to know that salaries can vary greatly within each industry and depend on a lot of different factors such as company size, your experience, education, location, and how well you can sell yourself during your job interview and salary negotiations. If you need help crafting your resume and preparing for an interview in Canada, or even negotiate your next salary, we offer one-on-one -on -one career coaching services you can check the link below and find the type of service that suits you best. You can always consider self-employment or starting your own company. If you become the CEO of your own well-run successful business, you will make good money, have all the flexibility in the world, and it's all in your hands. Which field interests you the most? Would you go to school again to change your job to make bigger money or you're fully happy where you are today? Please share your thoughts in the comment section below. If this video was helpful, please click the like button below and subscribe to our channel for more useful content. Don't forget to join our Facebook group and support us on Patreon to be able to vote for the next video topics. A huge shout out to our existing patrons. Thank you so much for your support. Thanks for watching and we will see you in the next video. In the meantime, why don't you watch this video about healthcare in Canada? Stay healthy and take care. Bye-bye.